So you're thinking about making a move to Weymouth, Massachusetts, which is a suburb south of Boston, and you want to know everything that there is to know about living in Weymouth, like where it is, what makes it special, where are the good shops and restaurants, but you want the full story of Weymouth. So you want to hear actually some of the possible downsides as well. Well, you're in luck because that is what we're going to talk about today. But first, real quick, my name is Jeff Chubb, and I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent, and I've sold more than a thousand houses. We get calls, texts, and emails from folks just like you who are looking to make a move or sell their home in the Boston metro area, and I absolutely love it. So whether you're looking to make a move in the next 9 or 90 days, it doesn't matter. Give us a call, shoot us an email, or stop by youtuberealestateagent.com, fill in your information, and then we'll reach out to you. Weymouth is situated about 12 miles south of Boston. It's nestled between the towns of Quincy to the north, Braintree to the west, Hango to the east, and Rockland and Abington to the south. Town's close proximity to both the city and the ocean offers a unique blend of suburban living with a touch of coastal charm. Yet for some, this amazing town might present some challenges, but let's not dive too deep into that just yet. Commuters have multiple options to get into Boston, with one of the best things about Weymouth being its close proximity to Boston. Now, commute-wise, it doesn't get much better. While Weymouth does have neighborhoods, I'd say they're more like distinct areas. Areas like Weymouth Landing, North Weymouth, or even Union Point. We did an About Weymouth video that goes into more detail about what makes Weymouth, well, great. Be sure to check it out in the end. But this video is about the pros and the cons of Weymouth. So let's get into it. Let's start with the pros that Weymouth has to offer. Convenience. Weymouth is a pretty convenient spot to live. And spoiler alert, I have mass transit as a negative. So how could that be? It's because of the location of Weymouth and everything it has to offer its residents. Weymouth is primarily serviced by Route 3 and Route 3A. From a commuting standpoint into the city, it's a lot better than most. You have a great head start against all those South Shores fighting their way to get in and out of Boston. There should be a billboard while driving along Route 3 that says, if you lived here, you'd be home. They also have two commuter rail stops, which is pretty awesome. But really, the overall reason convenience is in the pro section is because they have everything you need. From local boutique shopping to big chain stores like Marshall's and TJ Maxx or Lowe's. To doctors, well, <laughs> they have a lot of doctors, which is actually what we're going to talk about now. But everything you need is within close proximity, which makes this town awesome. Healthcare facilities. Now, I touched on the amount of doctors that Weymouth has just moments ago. And the reason why they have so many doctors is thanks to Weymouth being the home of the South Shore Hospital. My aunt worked there, so I obviously have nothing but good things to say. And South Shore is a great hospital, but they happen to play in the playground of some of the best hospitals in the country. Some awards and attaboys they've gotten is being ranked four out of five stars from the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services Award. Awarded a gold star from the American Heart Association, and the LeapFrog Group recognized them as a top general hospital with an A safety grade. To say the least, it's a great hospital to have in your backyard. Now, local business and shopping. I touched on this one briefly a couple moments ago, but if you have a shopping eye in Weymouth, it's not going to disappoint you. They have the big box retailers that are tucked in quite a few shopping centers throughout Weymouth. It also seems like all grocery stores are stones throw away no matter where you live. But they also do have some small local boutique type retailers as well. It's a mix of the best of both worlds. Dining. Weymouth might be in Boston's shadow, but they can hold their own. Restaurants like Grill 151 or True North Kitchen are some amazing spots. Or you go to the tavern at Weatherby. And then there's Giardino's restaurant in the Mad Hatter. The point is that you have options. But where a lot of the local raves come from are from two local breweries. You got Vitamin C Brewery as well as the Barrel House Z Brewery. They're just huge, huge popular mainstays. Now safety and crime. As a licensed agent, I always have to be careful talking about crime because what I feel safe as a 260 pound guy is not necessarily the same as, well, you're going to feel safe in. So no feelings are involved with these stats from Niche.com. All four categories for violent crime were below the national average. These categories include assault, murder, rape, and robbery. Weymouth also was below the national average for property crime as well. And these categories include burglary, theft, and motor vehicle theft. Do your own research. And some of that best research is by actually calling or stopping by a local police station and talking to some of the officers on duty. Recreation and parks. 
Weymouth offers its residents a lot when it comes to parks and green spaces. Let's talk about some of the bigger, more notable parks. You got Webb Memorial Park, which offers panoramic views of Boston skyline and harbor views. There are walking paths, picnic areas, and a small beach. Great Esker Park is about 230 acres. It's also known for its tall esker. Oh, you're wondering what an esker is? Fair enough. It's a ridge of gravel deposited by a glacier. Now, the park has river views and has hiking and biking trails, a playground, and areas for fishing and kayaking. Then there's Pond Meadow Park, which is over 320 acres and is actually shared with Braintree. Now, that park has a 20-acre pond where people can fish as well as several trails suitable for walking, jogging, or biking. Then there's Weymouth's newest park, which is King Oak Hill. It has walking trails as well as Weymouth's largest pavilion. Then there's Whitman's Pond Park, which is basically just a little access strip so people can utilize Whitman's Pond. Then there are additional parks with sports fields like Legion Field or playgrounds for kids like Lovell Playground Affordability. Saying any real estate is affordable in the Boston metro area to an out-of-towner would get them looking at you cross-eyed. But when it comes to looking at other Boston metro communities, especially ones within the close proximity that is in Boston, the town of Weymouth is just that, affordable. Consider this for the price year to date. The average price for a single-family home in Weymouth is $618,000. Now, looking at some surrounding towns, this is 13% lower than Quincy, 45% lower than Milton, 16% lower than Braintree, and 59% lower than Hingham. Like I said, compared to neighboring towns, housing in Weymouth is affordable. But let's be frank. A $618,000 average sale price, it's a lot of money. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter where you live, though. There are always some downsides. So let's talk about the downsides of Weymouth that you should consider if you're moving here. Schools. Boy, this one was tough on where to put schools. In pretty much any other state, the Weymouth school system would kick you-know-what. But Massachusetts has the best school system in the country. And at the end of the day, I decided that if a system was ranked higher than 100 by Boston Magazine, then it would go in the con section. But let's talk about it some more. Weymouth is ranked 103rd for high school rankings by Boston Magazine, while itch.com gave them a B-minus ranking. The entire Weymouth school district serves nearly 5,600 students spread out across 11 schools. The teacher-to-student ratio is a little higher than the state average at 13 to 1, while 94% of those teachers have more than three years of experience. The test scores are a little all over the place. In the elementary schools, 58% test at or above the proficient level for reading, while 48% test at or above for math. It was 44% for reading and 41% for math in middle school, while the high school scored 60% for reading and 43% for math and 55% for STEM classes. Speaking of the high school, there are a little over 1,800 students that go to Weymouth High with a 90.3% graduation rate and a 60.9% of those students attending college. The average SAT score for reading and writing was 549, while the average for math was 535. The district has one preschool, eight elementary schools, and one middle school and one high school. Nightlife. What nightlife? All right, I kid. Kind of. If it's nightlife that you're looking for, then Weymouth probably isn't the place for you. Weymouth has some bars and some great restaurants, but it's not really known for its vibrant night scene. If you're looking for one, then you most likely are headed into Boston, which is going to be kind of a pain to get into. But think all of the Uber drivers you will get to meet going to and from Boston. Deployment Opportunities. Weymouth does well when it comes to employment opportunities, but they aren't exactly the epicenter of this metro market. The town's biggest employer is the South Shore Hospital, and then followed by the town of Weymouth itself, which include the local government, public works, and admin roles. And the Weymouth Public Schools come in as the third biggest employer, which shouldn't that be part of the town of Weymouth? Nah, anyway, most residents of Weymouth either commute into the city or work from home. Mass transit. Weymouth has mass transit, but their mass transit revolves around the commuter rail. Don't get me wrong, there are a lot of towns that don't have the commuter rail, so this is a huge plus, but ultimately, they are just a town away from the ultra-convenient red line access. From a commuting perspective, what makes them unique is that they have two commuter rail stops. However, each stop is serviced by a different commuter rail line. The two stops are the South Weymouth stop, which are within close proximity to Holbrook, Abington, and Rockland. And then you also have the Weymouth Landing stop, which is on the Braintree and Weymouth line. Cost of living. Confused on how the cost of living could be a negative, but yet affordability could be a positive? That's fair. And it's because we're going to talk about all things being relative. The cost of living here is in Weymouth, compared to other areas in the country, is well expensive. According to livingcost.org, 
the average cost of living in Weymouth for a single person is $2,806 compared to the average cost of living for a family of four at $6,253. The median after-tax salary in Weymouth is $4,516 per month. Here's where it gets a little crazy and the all things being relative part comes in. The 2806 is in the top 2%, of the most expensive cities in the world, ranked 147th out of 2022 cities in the U.S. and 20th out of the 92 in Massachusetts. It's expensive, but when compared to other mass towns that are within close proximity to Boston, it's not that bad. To say it another way, Weymouth is expensive, but offers a lot of good value when you factor in other neighboring towns as well as the proximity to Boston. Again, my name's Jeff Chubb with the Chubb Homes team. I hope you found this video helpful and it has helped you make the decision as to whether Weymouth is a place for you that you ultimately want to call home. We would absolutely love to help you in any way. If you have any questions, then give us a call, shoot us an email, or visit us at youtuberealestateagent.com. You can also find all of my contact information in the description below, and we will give you any additional information that will help you make the decision as to whether making a move to the Weymouth area is right for you. Also, be sure to check out other towns that we've done on our channel as well. And if you're not sure about Weymouth, then be sure to look at other community videos that we've done. One of the great things about Massachusetts is that there is a community that best fits everyone. Until next time.